I'd like to share a message with you today about the events of the last couple of weeks, which I know have been very concerning for all of us. The violence in Gaza and in Israel in the last few weeks was the most deadly since 2014. The conflict escalated rapidly and took many of us by surprise. This was a tragic operation, with too many casualties and tremendous damage on both sides. We think especially of the soldiers of the IDF who have been bearing much of the burden. We pray for their well-being, both physical and spiritual. And all of us hope that the coming months will bring healing to the Holy Land for both Jews and Palestinians. It is desperately needed. In Toronto and in Jewish communities throughout the world, we have found ourselves very much embroiled in this conflict. We have see seen a significant outburst of anti-Semitism, attaching itself in many cases to the campaign opposing the actions of the Israeli government. Many of us were rattled and shaken to see this oldest form of hatred and prejudice rear its head again. And it's that sentiment, it's that sentiment which brings me to offer a few comments. First, I would call on progressive Jews to be very cautious joining with anti-Israel or pro-Palestinian demonstrations. Not all criticism of Israel is illegitimate. It is not all unwarranted, and it is certainly not all anti-Semitic. But when the leaders of these marches call for intifada and from the river to the sea, they are effectively calling for the extermination of Jews. Not only are we forbidden to be party to such a cause, we are also compelled to actively condemn it. Some people out there want peace and coexistence, but others, and I think it's most others, want Israel gone. Know the difference. Second, if you are a right-wing Zionist, consider the same words that I shared just a moment ago. Not all criticism of Israel is illegitimate. We are seeing many Jews today, older but especially younger ones, who question many of Israel's policies towards the Palestinians. We can disagree and discuss ideas, there's nothing wrong with that, but disagreement must never turn to hatred. We can disagree and at the same time understand that criticism from, of Israel is often coming from deep-rooted places of empathy and compassion, not from anti-Semitism. So let us not dismiss, let's discuss. Third, with increased risk of anti-Jewish violence in our city, many are considering concealing their Jewish identities in public. While I understand the impulse, we must not give in to this kind of fear in our country. When we are afraid to be who we are in public, we're giving up on more than just a high necklace or a kippah. We're giving up on tolerance, we're giving up on multiculturalism, we're giving up on diversity, we're giving up on Canada. We all have a part to play in making this a better country, and you can do it by being proud of who you are. And finally, here in Toronto, we have some rebuilding to do. There are many Muslim people who are working to frame this conflict as a conflict between Islam and the West. It is a tactic used to delegitimize Israel by entangling it in the history of colonial empire. For that reason, and for many other reasons, we reject that frame. This is not a conflict between Islam and the West and we will not counter hatred with more hatred. Let us see our emergence from this pandemic as an opportunity to renew the relationships with our neighbors. And let's see the coming years bring more, not less dialogue, and more, not less understanding between the Muslim and the Jewish communities in this city. Shabbat has always been a time to turn our attention away from work and cherish our family and friends. We have family and friends as individuals, but we also have wonderful family and friends as a Jewish community. I would like to acknowledge those leaders, Jewish and non-Jewish, 
liberal, conservative, NDP across the political spectrum who had the courage to speak up on behalf of the Jewish community this week. Thank you. I conclude not with the interpretation of this Parsha, but with the symbol of this Parsha, the symbol that opens up the scene of Behalotcha, the golden menorah, now and in the past, the symbol of Israel. We remember it, and we, mem we remember the olive branches to its left and to its right, reminding us of Zechariah's vision, which should guide our hopes. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Wishing you all Shabbat Shalom.